Welcome to another Build Day Live video here at Cohesity. I'm Alistair Cook, and I'm joined for this video by Sai Mukundan. Sai, welcome, and could you introduce us to yourself and your role here at Cohesity? Sure, Alistair. First of all, thanks for um, coming over to Cohesity and, uh, and uh, doing this event. We really appreciate it. Uh, so my name is Sai Mukundan. I am in the product management team uh, here at Cohesity. Right, and we've been talking a lot about um, the actual detail of what Cohesity does with the cloud, but I th thought it would be nice to sort of step back a little bit and think about how Cohesity approaches public cloud as, as part of the portfolio and capabilities and those kinds of things. Can you talk us through a little bit about some of that approach? Sure. Um, so what we hear from customers, and we are primarily driven, driven by you know what customers are telling us and where the market is, uh, is headed as well, um, broadly speaking, three things in terms of what the customers are looking to do as far as the cloud is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of, uh, the first one is a number of customers are still in a hybrid uh, world in combination of both on-premises as well as, you know, trying to adopt the cloud. And so in that context, they're really looking at the cloud as a long-term destination for data that needs to be stored for, you know, relatively long periods of time. Um, the second set of customers that we have uh, really look to the cloud as uh, an, an area where they can leverage it for uh, disaster recovery. So the idea being that they still continue to have their on-premise and then the cloud becomes a destination uh, in terms of you know, bringing together some of the data on-premise data centers that they're eliminating and looking at the cloud as uh, a DR angle. And the third set of customers, um, I would say, uh, are really looking at cloud first uh, and looking at uh, developing applications uh, that run in the cloud, uh, including their some of their mission critical ones. And as part of that, they are looking at you know the same goodness that Cohesity offers in the on-premise world. Looking at sim the problem sets are very similar, so they're looking at similar things in the cloud context. So those are broadly speaking the three things that we hear from customers. That last one must be very interesting and, and one of the conversations I had um, in, in an earlier video was around that your compliance and data protection requirements are exactly the same if your data is in the cloud as if it's on premises, yet cloud providers don't necessarily have the, the services, the backup services and data protection that, that you require for that compliance. So presumably that's, it's really important to be able to take the same policies from on-premises and apply them to your uh, public cloud-based applications and, and data. Yeah, you're right, Alistair, because what happens and what customers are beginning to realize is, you know, for all the goodness of the cloud, the durability and the availability that they offer, um, they still uh, want to have uh, other vendors, other solutions that complement the portfolio from the other services from the cloud vendors, and that's where uh, the aspect of data protection that you mentioned comes in, particularly from a from a compliance angle. Um, and I think one other aspect, uh, a little bit, I would say, more futuristic or um, looking ahead, uh, is the fact that many of these customers are also thinking about not just you know doing things in one cloud. They may start there. But potentially, as time rolls along, we all know how important it is for anybody to have, uh, you know, a multi-vendor strategy. Just not, not just from a technical perspective, but more so even from a business mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, and so, when they think about it, they want to have a solution such as Cohesity that can work across different clouds as well, not just today, but going forward as well. So that ability to again same data protection policies applied wherever we happen to place the application that the ability to provide that data protection and, and governance doesn't constrict us on which cloud we can adopt for an application because there's uh, different clouds have different capabilities they're not all uniform and so the ability to place your workload where the workload is best suited without that constraint is, is going to be important to customers right right and what we have also seen is um, as much as you know, cloud itself is in general is is re relatively simple to sort of like turn on and start consuming. Mm -hmm. As as you start as you you know, you know peel into it a little bit more, you get into a lot of the you know uh, technology uh, elements that customers have to understand, and they and they really grapple with some of these things because interfaces are different, um, you know, with uh, different clouds. Um, the APIs are similar, yet they are not exactly identical, right? So even if they sort of take a do-it-yourself approach, um, more often than not, they realize that 
bringing this all together across various different environments is, is more challenging than probably what they start with. And that's where they're looking at solutions from other partners. Um, and what you hit on is, is exactly right. You know, a policy based API first uh, approach and architecture is really what customers are looking for. And what are you seeing customers actually implementing in terms of using the data mobility? We've seen a couple of places in, in the other videos where data in one location, be it on-premises or one cloud, needs to be made available into another cloud or maybe back to on-premises. What's your experience with what customers are looking for here? Yeah, so there are really two scenarios um, that customers typically do in terms of this data mobility piece. Um, the first one is and we talked about earlier from on-premise uh, to the to the cloud. So they're looking at how can they do more with data protection solution, like uh, and that's where Cohesity really excels because not only are we just a backup and recovery for their on-premise, but we are facilitating other things on top of the data. Data mobility being just one example. And so the idea is, once it lands on Cohesity, the ability to take it and you know spin up those same. Uh, applications in the cloud is something that we facilitate. So that's that's one scenario. Um, the second scenario in terms of data mobility, I would say uh, you, you, you could call it mobility, but really more about getting extracting value from the data, right? I mean, uh, it, it's a little bit of a stretch uh, to say mobility, but extracting value from uh, other applications that can run on the data set. Uh, so more often than not, once the data lands on these systems, it tends to remain pretty dormant. But that's where we differentiate ourselves from Cohesity because we can run other appli other applications on top of that. Um, we recently launched an app store uh, with both uh, homegrown applications as well as third-party applications that run on it. And so really uncovering uh, more value from the data is what I am sort of bucketing in the in the mobility angle, where we are bringing uh, we are bringing those applications to the data as opposed to moving the data to you know, another location, so to speak. And what we've seen in in that um, app store that we'll, we will have a look at in the, the live stream as well is the ability to do things like have your log data being put into a view on your Cohesity cluster and then using Splunk to do the an analytics on that log data, or uh, to have something like. Um, I haven't looked at the detail of what the Amanus data solution looks like on here. Amanus backs up cloud native applications, so I can see that being really useful for people who are in hybrid cloud and need to do data protection on things like Cassandra databases. Um, get that into the, the unified data protection. I'm expecting that Cassandra is, is another backup product that's doing ingest onto um, Cohesity platform, so that v very broad selection of, of applications on top. Yeah. Plus, of course, the, the analytics that uh, is, is being progressively built out by Cohesity themselves. Yeah, that's right. So if you actually look at it, it's very similar to sort of the ecosystem that exists in the cloud, right? Because on the cloud, you can see that the cloud vendors themselves are, uh, you know, in addition to providing that, you know, basic infrastructure, they, are, they have services of their own. They have applications that they are building. Um, but there is a, a, an active and vibrant uh, marketplace and ecosystem in the cloud um, mm. for some of the things that uh, you know the cloud vendors are doing themselves as well. So in the, at the end of the day, really it's choice that the customer has, uh, and depending on their needs, they they can pick and choose, right? So that's sort of the the parallel I can draw to the app store or the app ecosystem that that we have is there are things that Cohesity. Uh, is doing and will continue to do and and you know will obviously do a lot more with the data set that we have, mm -hmm. um, but we don't claim to you know know every application out there or every other specific need a customer may have or an industry vertical may have, and that's where bringing these applications and uh, enabling them to run our platform really uncovers the the data set that we have. So if I'm an existing Cohesity customer, what am I? easiest first steps to integrating public cloud with my Cohesity implementation? Yeah, so broadly speaking, we have seen, um, back to the three things that I mentioned earlier, we have seen those as a, as a three really solid entry points uh, so using for the customer. Cloud storage as an infinite pool. Yeah, so typically customers start with uh, the storage um, as a, from an IaaS perspective in the cloud. So extending or you know leveraging that that's, that storage, the likes of S3 and Blobs. And that then uh, and lets me not have to use tape. And we've we've seen a, an interesting use case around how the the recovery process 
uh, went from five days to a couple of hours with the removal of that tape transfer. Exactly, exactly. So that so that's that's one. Um, the second one uh, is really the the hybrid scenario that I mentioned, and I'm I'm sort of bunch bundling a, a few use cases in there, mm -hmm. right? We, there's certainly DR. There's there's the aspect of taking. Uh, applications on premise and potentially getting them to run in the cloud. So uh, both the failover because there's been a disaster on premises, right. but also the ability to run a dev test copy of production right. in, in the cloud for right. fidelity of testing of your new changes. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And then the last one is really the, the, the cloud native, so to speak. And cloud native can be a combination of uh, both. Uh, you know, protecting uh, their IaaS, their, their you know VMs and and, and, and compute infrastructure, uh, or it can be SaaS, uh, such as you know Office 365 and uh, those kind of applications. It, the the third bucket is interesting actually because um, we we launched uh, a, a new service of our own uh, called the Cloud Backup Service, mm -hmm. uh, and so that provides and it's this is for uh, Google Cloud at this point of time. And that provides a SaaS offering now from Cohesity to be able to consume this, uh, you know, rich data protection solution in a, in a in really a, a SaaS way. Uh, we are in the we are live in the Google Marketplace, um, and um, uh, we have some really good examples of how fast a customer was able to just you know sign up for the service and then get up and running in literally a matter of you know 30 to 40 minutes. Right. Um, so that's that that's something that's really exciting in terms of you know what uh, we have done and probably what we will look to do more of as well. And so that's progressively deeper integration into the cloud platforms. Correct, correct. Yeah, it, this one's directly integrated, um, both from a technical perspective in terms of you know how we work with the, with the marketplace that the cloud vendors have, but more importantly, also from a commercial standpoint, because customers are, when they consume the cloud, they're looking for ease of use, both from an operational standpoint, meaning technically also from a, from a uh, you know, payment and other billing. The business standpoint. interaction. Exactly. So now uh, everything is rolled up into their cloud bill, so to speak. Uh, and as far as uh, the customers are concerned, there's just one uh, vendor or right. one one um, uh, commercial vendor to deal with, and then things just seamlessly happen behind the scenes for us uh, from f that are sort of like hidden from them, or the complexity is hidden from them. So that's really. Uh, you know something that's that's very exciting uh, for us as well as more importantly for uh, customers we have talked to. Well, thank you, Sai, on that note of innovation for joining me today, and thank you for joining us on this video. Stay tuned for more great Build Day Live content from Cohesity. Thank you, guys. Nice to be here. <laughs>